describe his name and proclaim to Shamaim and proclaim to the earth to know and proclaim and declare the Shem of Yahuwah, his character, his love for us, everything. Okay? Let's go to verse 16. You can read the chapter along at home. It's a good chapter to read. 16. They moved him to jealousy with foreign matters or foreign things. With ab abominations, they provoked him. Now look at this part. He says Israel is scattered. Some of them are in the United States and don't know how they got here and who they got there. They don't even know who they are. Okay? But they have move him to jealousy with foreign things with abominations they provoked him they slaughtered to demons and not to aloha mighty ones they did not know now if you got a king imus version he says them that worship idols do not worship aloha but worship mighty ones or demons okay so here is like we explained in the first sessions on the exposing the principality. They got an image in L.A. in the city hall of the goddess Justice. In that temple, goddess of justice, she sits on a three pillar... She's part brass, brazen altar, okay? She has blindfolded because in Greek mythology, she can read your mail through fortune telling. She has a balance, and in the balance, she puts your sins of the crime on one side and whips out Nike, the feather, and puts it on the other side, and you hope you win your case. Telling you, you got a small chance with a snowball in hell because even if you think you won the case, you're going to have probation hanging on you for a long time with computers. And she don't need to look at you. She got computers now. <laughs> she can be blindfolded all day long and pull up your priors. Okay? It's a pagan goddess. That's what justice is. And her nickname is Dyke. It's the same word because she's male, female, masculinity. She's a strong woman. A mighty one. All right? It's a pagan deity. These are pagan deities in our system of this world because who's the, who's the G.O.D. of this world? Satan. Satan is. All right? Of this age and system. And you can see all the deities and idols. They must be destroyed. They must be crushed. They must be just torn down. They use horses and bulls back then to pull them down. They should be done with four-wheel drives now. <laughs> You know what I mean? They need to come down all the pagan rituals of false deities because they are having... This is what happens. I saw my ancestors, and I really don't know how old, but they were in sailboats. But from a distance, I saw steam, so that would be 1800s. I saw my ancestors coming through New York, and in the spirit, I saw them. They're looking at the statue of... Libertarius, the goddess with her own law. She has a book, right? She's got a lantern. Like the Olympic lantern of the sun deity fire. Okay? Now, she says... Murder is now abortion. She has another law book. She says homosexuality is not Sodom and Gomorrah. Are, are you hearing me? She says you can arrest a person and put them in prison for life without two or three witnesses. You can do it by a suspicion of a phone call. That's what she says in her book. Are you hearing this? You see, she doesn't have Torah. She don't have the right ruling. She has her own law of libertarians. They turned around in the, new in, the, in, the, in the Renewed Covenant and changed that verse that's supposed to say, the perfect means mature, 
right ruling or mature prescribed instructions of shalom shalom and they really don't want you to know the hebrew word for it because that hebrew word means even free from taxes so they've got to put different foreign words in it. So we come into this country, or this country comes with her own book, her own goddess. They look at it. Now let's look at this picture. People worship it. People worship it. They get allegiance. They look at the flag. They look at this stuff. And they worship the goddess. I'm telling you right now. And it says here in the Word, they don't worship idols. They worship demons. You go pick up a little Buddha and you stick it in your house or you pick up the Virgin, you put a Guadalupe or Mary or the Queen of Heaven and you burn some candles. What do you think is going on here? Demons are going to say, I can't show myself. They'll scream and holler and run for me. So I'm going to hide behind the Lady of Guadalupe and I'm going to get this worship. Are you hearing me? So they hide behind the image. We have an image of jealousy in the scripture. He is totally angry and jealous that he's the devil and through images and idols are stealing the praises of his rightful people, are stealing the prayers of his rightful people. But his people got to wake up and wake up and know, get a rude awakening. We say check up from the neck up, get a rude awakening from the head up and realize that they're worshiping pagan deities with false Greek pagan deity names. If these, if these things, one brother said, well, it doesn't mean nothing, dude. It's just, I said, you mean to tell me Statue of Libertarius in Japan. It's nothing. Somebody spent $2.5 million to make this idol. Are you hearing me? It's a business. Somebody's putting these things up. And of course, it's the, it's the secret society, the Illuminati, the Masons. They are gravitated to Latin and Roman and, and Greek pagan worship. Okay? So now, the witches have a new book out. It's called Triple Goddess of Grace. The Trinity of Grace, which is Charismatica, Charity, Charis. It's a, it's a triple grace, okay? It is ancient Greek mythology. They got a new book out. And how to do the magic with the three goddesses around the spirit of the goddess of G-R-A-C-E. That's a goddess name. Okay? And then people are going around saying we're saved by G-R-A-C-E when it's supposed to be favor. In Hebrew and Greek, it's supposed to be favor. And they're going around saying we're saved by the G-R-A-C-E. And the father is a jealous Elohim. He will not stand it no more. He will not tolerate the praises of his people going to these idols. And who's behind the idols? The demons involved around the idols. You got that? There's demons there. We, we, it says, Shaul says there's a visible and an invisible realm. Wrap this up. And he says here, they slaughter to demons and not to Eloah in this particular where they use G-O-D capitalized. It's the Hebrew word 433 for them that are watching. And it's the Hebrew word, word letter for letter, word for word, 433, Aloha or Aloahim. It's almost Hawaiian like Aloha, okay? And then on the second one, and Elohim's with a small cap, they did not know. Verse, no new ones who come lately, which your fathers did not fear. Now, I want to emphasize on the last part of this verse. He says, they are new ones upcoming. New demons, new spirits upcoming. Your fathers didn't even were scared of that stuff. Why are you scared of it? Why are you entertaining? Why are you worshiping? Why is it? Well, the problem is we've been raised into it. We did not know. Our parents taught us what we thought was English, the, la the language of Angoland, German, French, Scottish. Are you hearing me? And a whole bunch of other conquerors that went through there. And so we are speaking words of paganistic words of a conquest vocabulary. And we thought is, oh, your English is very well. No, it's not. It's six languages muddied together. 
Are you hearing me? And, and, it does, and if you read the real old King James 1611 like we play around, it is hard to read 1611. It's just hard. Okay, you can see the words there. They just got more letters, some of them, or less letters. Now, new ones who come lately, new ones that come lately in this region, which your fathers did not have phobia. They didn't reverence them. They didn't revere them. They weren't scared of them. They were not paranoid of them. You neglect the rock who brought you forth and forgot the El who fathered you. This is frustrating for a one that loves the scattered house of Israel and all them that grafted in and come in. This is frustrating because, and I don't, I'm not putting that as a word to meaning an emphasis that he's frustrated. He's got shalom. But he loves us. He wants us to worship Him. He wants us to get it right. He's ready for a wedding supper. He's getting ready. And we have to go through rehearsal right now. The best weddings, they have good rehearsals. No, the right language, the right steps, the right words. We are in rehearsal time because when we enter the streets of New Jerusalem, they're going to be celebrating the feast of trumpets. And most believers don't know nothing about the Feast of Trumpets. And we, they say they're going, but they don't know nothing about Trumpets. This is rehearsal. Look at your neighbor next to you. This is rehearsal time. We're getting ready for a feast. A thousand year. Hallelujah, Hallelujah somebody. Go with me to Telehim, uh, Psalms, chapter 22, verse 3. It says here, Yet you are set apart enthroned on the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in you. They trusted you delivered them. They cried to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not ashamed. Who is this? Verse 1. My El, my Elohim, why have you forsaken me? Far from saving me, far from the words of my groaning, O oh, my Elohim, I call by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but I find no rest. Yet you are my set apart, enthroned. He's explained. A lot of people like to quote one part of that verse in the New Testament, in the Renewed Covenant, instead of reading the whole thing. He said, you are throned. You've always been there for me. You never left me, nor forsake me. You're there. You're not to have fear anymore. Fear, perfect love, cast out demon. Perfect love cast out phobia. Study to show yourself a prude, a workman rightly divine in the word of truth. Know that you know that you know who you are in the Messiah of the house of Israel. Okay? But yet what the system has done has got us wearing the strong man, mighty one spirit called Nike. The goddess of prosperity in business. You go to the Walmart and they got skulls with wings of demonic messengers they call angelicos. They're making bucks off the new generation. It's hard to find a plain shirt. I said, can a guy find a plain brown shirt? It'd cost five dollars more. You know, if you want your child not to be coated, tacked on of devils. But we're not to have any fear or demon or reverence them or respect them we must command them to come down we must command them to come down they are powerless as we take dominion authority in Yahushua's name we have dominion authority as the house of Israel we thought we had authority when we we're using the J-man the G-girl the C-girl are you hearing me? We thought, but when I did the study, the other studies I have on exposing principalities, we were jurisdictionally having only a certain level of principality authority over another authority. Are you hearing this? Because there's heaven, there's heaven, and then there's heaven. Those are Greek places. 
It's the place where the Elysian hills of the Greeks die and go to their cloud with their Greek god Zeus. It is not Shamaim, where the Father dwells. You must get that through your thick theologian head. It is not the same place of the Elohim of Israel. It's a different place, a different time, a different space. It's a completely different term. So next time when you say you're going to the H place, put yourself on check what house you're in. Because if you're in the house of Israel, you're going to New Jerusalem. Where New Jerusalem is coming down as a bride with a garment. And she's coming down and she's over like 1,800 miles square or something, something radical. I don't got the, the math here. Up, down, all around. And it's a beautiful place. He's preparing a mansion for us. Don't let your mansion room be. He didn't show up because they went to heaven instead. Are you hearing me? Because we're going to New Jerusalem. We're going to New Jerusalem for a thousand year reign. And I'm not worried what happens after that because all I know is the information to get there. Are you hearing me? My GPS points to there. And with New, New Jerusalem, with him for a thousand years. Now what happens after the third My GPS is going to change. Whatever he's going to do. All right, but right now it's there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 12 and 36 and 37. And I say to you that every idle word men speak, they shall give an account of it in the day of judgment. We are going to the Bema. That's called the judgment seat of the Messiah. The word Bema, a small little word for three words they use. Okay? It is the place where we looked. He looks through us like glass. He rewards us. And he also withholds rewards. Okay, we, we are, our salvation is not in question through the blood of the Messiah. All right, when you're there at the Bema, you go, whew, because this is what Bema means. One foot short breath. So when you wake up in the Bema, you're going to go, oh, I made it, man. I'm glad I'm not at the, the other place. I'm at the Bema. I'm not at the great white throne judgment. Are you hearing me? Because some are going to wake up to a white throne judgment and they're going to see all the magnificence of it and they say, wow, I made it. No, you made it on a temporary courthouse. <laughs> you know what I mean? You made it somewhere else. So it's the Bema. And he said, for by your words shall you be declared righteous and by your words you shall be declared unrighteous. One condemns you, one judges you, one prospers you. Whatever words you speak, we used to say the word blessed, and I'm not going to use that pagan word. We prosper. Whatever your word, are you going to prosper you or curse you? Whatever words you speak. And the only way it gets cleaned up is to follow the right ruling and get under the blood of the Messiah and get grafted in and know the marriage covenant. That's the only way it's going to go away. Any words you spoke on this earth. Did you know... As I repented for every word, every word. And when I found out I, on the internet two days ago about the word testament, it's a word for somebody is dead. Our Messiah is alive. I'm sorry for even giving that information to others. You ever been in a, in a, in a talking to somebody and you said something wrong? You said, you know what, I'm sorry. I take that back. You ever did that? I used to, hey, I'm sorry, brother. I take that back. I'm sorry I said that to you. When we, it says that them that when you come to the knowledge of the truth, when you repent, your obedience of repentance now has revenge against your past disobedience. That's in Corinthians, paraphrase. Okay? You're revenging all disobedience by your what? Obedience. So by me now, I am like, there's some people say, man, you're going too far with all the pagan words and names, worship and preaching and teaching. Is it because I say, but I realize these are principalities that keep people under sickness, disease, and bondage. And I want to see them set free in the house of Israel. I am, in, I am, I am entrusted with information. And to how much given is information is much entrusted of you. You have a big responsibility. So my responsibility is to help correct you because we're going under a pure tongue and a pure language for New Jerusalem. So now I repent. I reverse the curse. I revenge 
every pagan word I ever said in my And I'm probably going to learn another hundred of them before the end of the year. Are you hearing me? And repent. Like one friend said, we just got to learn Hebrew and then we'll be okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? But you got to realize even in Israel, they had King George. Like over here, we had King James, King Imus. They have King George over there giving them paganistic words. Okay? In the new Israel language that they have produced lately for the last hundred years. Okay? So now, we're revenging, but we have to watch and monitor the words we speak. Here's another one. Go to verse, go to Titus. Titus chapter 2, verse 8, it says here, Sounds, spe Soundness of speech beyond report, reproach, in order that the opponent is put to shame, having no evil word to say about you. Who is our, the enemy? Who's the one trying to convict us? The district attorney calls Satan. Are you hearing me? And he's going to try, he's going to use your very words that you do not pull back and change and repent because of a lack of knowledge. And look at verse 7. Show yourself to them an example of good works in all manners in teaching. Show uncorruptness and seriousness, soundness of speech beyond reproach. Okay? Go to Revelations, verse 4 and 5. They are those who are not defiled with woman, for they are maidens. They are those who are the lamb forever whoever he leads them on. They were in redeemed from among men, being first fruits of Elohim and to the land. Verse 5. And in their mouth was found no falsehood, for they are blameless before the throne of Elohim. We must come to the level to watch our speech and tongues. We're not going to clean up every word. But we have to focus on not saying and glorifying, or should I say, esteeming and honoring. Because the glorifying is a goddess. So we're not esteeming and honoring those pagan deities no more. When you say the word throne, it sounds English. No, it's thronos. It's Greek. You're talking Greek. Yes, it's a Greek word. It's not a bad word. It's just, you know. Okay, let's go to Romans chapter 10. I just want you to get the understanding we're not to confess and speak those. I do it here to, to show people on the internet, express who they are. But when once you, we are not giving it esteem no more. We're not praising it no more. I don't know about you, but when I went to court, or I went to city halls, or I went to s public libraries, and I see these statues, I said, man, that thing is expensive. Man, what? they got Libertarius there. They got Victoria there. They got all these pagan deities there. You know what I mean? And it's like, what, what, what is this? Oh, she's fine. She's showing all her body. You remember your little boys and you look at these pagan deities with Greek half row, always showing one breast showing. And that's what they do in the initiation of Masons. They take a garment and put, they take their shirt and put one breast showing. To come into the hoodwink. Then they put that nice cute tie on. They're totally hoodwink. You know what I mean? They wear their blue and their white and their red, white and blue clothing to go into court, which is the hoodwink that they're under their Latin law, under their system hoodwink, under their demonic of the worshipful master mason. That's what they call them, worshipful master. Okay? So then they get hoodwinked and you think you look good. Romans chapter 10 verse 8. It says here, but what does it say? This verse, we quote it to win people to salvation. The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of belief which we are proclaiming. That if you confess with your mouth the master Yahushua and believe in your heart that Elohim has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Now, in the society of all the systems, the word born again is very new. In John chapter 3, you know, 103. A hundred years ago, it was in, in good old Bibles in the early 1900 scriptures. Excuse me, I don't want to use the word Bible. That's the town of Biblos. Okay? But the scriptures, it was, it was regenerated. It's a Greek word for being your DNA regenerated. Completely changed person. All of a sudden the word born again came, but the word born again is a Mason secret society term that you left one five degrees of knowledge and went into the light of another degree of knowledge. 
Okay? So they've been born again. Then they put a blindfold, and when they stand up from their hood week ser uh, ser uh, sermonette or vows, they take the vow and they say, now you're in the light of a new knowledge. Okay? You're born again. All right? In the cross of skull bowls, they, they, they nail them to a coffin, and they come back hours later or the next day, and they open them up. You were dead, and now you're alive. You were in darkness, and now you're born again. Okay, it's, These are artificial, generic, deceptive lies of mythologies of the paganism that they brought in, but taking the real terminated, uh, terminology that we've been really regenerated, born of the Ruha. Are you hearing me? Born of the Ruha Kadosh. He says, if you confess the Master Yahushua, you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart or corazón, that Elohim has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And saved is a big word. It doesn't mean you're in, in like Flint, okay? For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and one confession with the mouth, and so is saved. Now, let's look at verse 10. We usually skip this verse when we were doing the Catholic Crusades. And we were good crusade coordinators for the Catholic Church. Believe me, we did big time crusades for the Catholic Church and didn't even realize it. The Pope never acknowledged us though. Okay? He says, For with a heart one believes unto righteousness. It's not just the confession of the mouth and believe in your heart. With the heart one believes into right ruling. One is following the prescribed instruction of the marriage covenant. Are you hearing me? And then he goes on and he says here, he said, and one confesses with his mouth and is saved. Confesses what? Righteousness. Right ruling. Not lawlessness. Like that shepherd that told me, oh, you're into legalism now. I said, yeah. So what does it make you? An illegal? You must be illegal. You must run red stop, stop signs and red lights all day long. You must be going and doing all the illegal stuff. I, you want to call me a legal citizen? I am illegal. I'm legal. You must got, a, you must got something else in your pocket. <laughs> you know what I mean? And see, keep going. He said, because the scripture says, whoever puts his trust in him, who? Yahuwah, shall not be put to shame. Because there is no difference, distinction between the Yehudi, the Greek, for the same master of all is rich to all that calling upon him. For everyone who calls on the Shem, the name of Yahuwah, shall be saved. Now, you must understand this verse here, verse, verse 13. They put the word L-O-R-D there. They put a capital L in the front. And they, you think when you're reading it that it is the Messiah, Yeshua. The master of Yeshua, Yeshua, okay? But it's really a quotation from the first covenant of marriage of the book of Joel, and the book of Joel will not have that word. When you look at Joel, you look at this word, it is the father's name, Yahuwah. It's the Yohewahe, or Vahe. You got that? So the L-O-R-D pancakes and disguises if they're talking about the Messiah or they're talking about the Father, Yahuwah. Are you hearing this? So he says here, whoever who calls on the Shem, the character of Yahuwah, shall be saved. Joel 2, 32. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without one proclaiming? What are we doing today? We're proclaiming. What did the first scripture we opened up? We proclaimed it. We, in Deuteronomy 32, 1 through 3. We are proclaiming if they are not sent. How is it? As it has been written, how pleasant are the feet of those who bring good news of shalom who bring the good news. James, Yaakov, chapter 3, verse 9. Now, his name is Yaakov. It's not James. Uh, King Imus put his name in the scriptures, and that is a that qualifies him to never go to Shamarim, because anybody that adds or takes away from the scriptures 
It cannot enter Shamanim. So, and, and Mary's name is Marim, and he put his mother's name for Mary, the Queen Mary of Scott. So he, named, he put his mother's name for uh, Mariam, and they put, he put his name for Jacob, the brother of Yahushua. Okay? So that's, that's a really bad check mark against him. Okay? Jacob, James chapter 3, verse 9, says this. He says, with it we, ble we, we it used to say bless, but it's prosper or Baruch our Elohim. In Israel, they say Baruch Atah, Baruch Hashem, Baruch. We say that in Israel. We don't use the word B-L-E-S-S. -S. Okay. In verse 9, continue. He said, Baruch our Elohim and Father with it. We, we curse men who have been made in the likeness of Elohim. Out of the same mouth proceeds Baruch and cursing my brothers. This should not be so. So I'm telling you and I'm proclaiming to you and then by watching by stream or hearing by DVD or live here in the audience of the, uh, of the upper room, we have to watch what we say and correct our language. We have to correct our language. It's easy. We can do it. We don't even speak English. Period. You know what I mean? It's not English. It's a whole different language. All right? So we want to, we want to invoke prayers for people, but we don't want to curse them. All right? All right, so let's go to ver, uh, Proverbs 6.2. And it's very important because, see, when we were believers in the Christian community, we used to say, by the confession of your mouth, we'll either B-L-E-S-E-S, -E -S, which is a curse word, or curse you. All right? And watch what you say, the confession of your mouth. Confess good things. If you confess it long enough, you'll get this, you get that. I mean, I'm, the Father has given Tina and I so much favor that I just lay it before the altar and pray and go away. And I get busy doing things in the ranch for Chuck or the, the room or something. And hours, days or whatever, something, it, what we were praying for comes in. You know, I confess with my mouth once, but I say it to Yahuwah. I might pray the prayer a few times for people that are ill and things like that, or take authority and break those spirits of sickness and infirmities over them. But I'm finding now, as we speaking the true name of the Father, the Father saying, oh, I have him written in my book that he knows my name. He knows my right ruling. I know that one. I know that voice. He knows my name. I know that voice. That's my servant. Okay? And see, because he becomes acquainted. If we walk in a room, and it, we say I walked into a if I was a little boy, and I've done that before, looking for my dad. I walk into a bar or a nightclub or a bar, and it's a sport bar, nothing really crazy. And I said, Dad! I mean, 30 dads are going to turn their head. Because <laughs> they're all titles. That's not his name. But my dad knows my voice. Right? But if I call him by name, that's more of adult of authority, speaking to his father in his image. Okay, verse, chapter 6, verse 2, he says, Have been snared by the words of your own mouth, have been caught by the words of your own mouth. Chapter 7, verse 1, My son, guard my words and treasure up my commands with you. 2. Guard my commands and live, and my Torah as the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers. Write them on the tablets of your heart. Say to wisdom, you are my sister, and call understanding a close friend, and guard you against a strange woman. All right. So those are good verses on the confession of your mouth and guarding it. So with this understanding, we're getting the revelation as we come to a close that now we got to correct ourselves. It says that he's preparing his Israel, house of Israel, with a pure tongue and a pure language. I want you to take it serious. I want you to start applying it serious. Catch yourself, stop yourself, correct yourself. We got that pamphlet up there with some of the words to help you. If you don't remember them, call me up. We'll help you. Or we'll go back and eat. You can ask me. We'll write. We'll let, you can write down other words. We're still learning. We're preparing ourselves 
as the house of Israel. We're correcting the renewing of the spirit of our mind with the word, but the real word. The real word. And we're preparing ourselves as the, as the bride, as the house of Israel, for new Jerusalem that's coming down as a bride for us to occupy that place. Another thing that we're doing is when I pray for people and for, for sickness, infirmities, I tell them, when I pray for you, you're going to get healed. But I'm telling you right now, don't, if, I don't want to hear you say, praise G-O-D. I don't want to hear you say, G-L-O-R-Y, thank you. Because that's a different person. That's not my Hebrew Messiah that walked the Middle East of Israel and Bethlehem and Jerusalem. That's not my same Messiah. Okay, it's a different person. Now, he loved us and hugged us and washed us in the blood like a baby that doesn't know but goo goo gaga. But once you become adult and have a knowledge, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. When I became adult, I had speak as a man or adult. From now on, we're speaking adult language. And you know when you're an adult. The same thing with the things that are going on here with all the pagan worship temples. Okay, that's good. They, if, they have, if they have the cathedrals, the three stack cathedral with the point in the middle, that is secret society Mason Nimrod. That's straight up sun god wor worship. That's not the S-O-N, that's S-U-N. Okay, worship. And those things got demonic uh, calling or homing in to draw these things in. So we need to have authority and command them to come down.